perspective on that match. Thanks, Riv. I'm joined by teammates Cali Trolls, Nian, and Porpoise. I got all three of you up here. Nian, I'm going to come to you first. Requalification for the LCS. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's not a situation you wanted to be in to begin with, but you were here. You guys persevered through it. You've made it back in, so you've guaranteed yourselves, you know, all the way through to the end of the spring split. How does that feel? I don't even know how to feel, honestly. Like, I've played league for three and a half years now, and like this is my first time ever winning anything important. <laughs> like this is my fifth relegation match. I've lost four, oh. so it's like I don't even know what I'm thinking right now. It's just really nice to finally win something. Well, it has to feel good. And Porpoise, over to you. We had a nice feature about you and your brother, and the fact that you know playing in the LCS was both of your dreams. Uh, he is here with you, you know, helping out with the team. What is it? What has it been like? You know, the journey through the LCS to now, and also knowing that you're going to requalify and stick together for at least uh, the near future. Uh, well, it's like this big journey from the first split we got in. We almost, we squeezed into the uh, the second season or the split, I should say, and now we had to requalify for this split. So it's been a little bit stressful, but uh, hopefully we can start picking up and growing as a team because we can actually see some um, really big growths we've had with how we've uh, dealt with how to snowball a lead and how to. Uh, execute team comps and stuff like that. So I think the ne this next split, y yet I've se said this last split also, <laughs> but it, we will do better this split. Okay, well, I'm going to come back to that in just a moment, but first I want to come to you, Cali Trolls, as you were very vocal in saying that, you know, before you move on from this career, you wanted to, you know, make sure you were leaving your team in a good mm -hmm. place. Well, you've had that opportunity. You've done it. They will be playing in the LCS next spring, yeah. next spring even without you. So I just want to, you know, come to you and ask you how that feels knowing that you are leaving them in a good spot. Um, I'm extremely satisfied. Although it wasn't like the biggest achievement just staying in the LCS, um, I'm, I feel really, really bad having the team uh, getting relegated and just leaving like, just like we just re got relegated and I like, just leave the team off. Um, it's been a wild journey for me uh, and, and a just life of dream for me the past one and a half year, and I've really enjoyed it uh, thoroughly, my, thoroughly, thoroughly in my life. There are certain times that was really stressful, but I think I just live through my life and I'm really satisfied. I think I can speak for you know all of the fans, the community at large, and saying that we're very grateful to you for having spent this time with us at the LCS and providing us with so much entertainment. Uh, back to you now, Porpoise, and your point about improvement. You know, specifically leading up to this uh, tournament, this series here, it's an interesting, you know, predicament that teams find themselves in, in that multiple patches have come through and a fair amount of time passed between the last time you played on the LCS stage in week nine and this tournament. And playing against a challenger team where you're not going to get a ton of information about them, what was your preparation like as a team? How do you plan for this series specifically as opposed to one against an LCS team that you've seen play so often? I think uh, playing against a team like Imagine is it's less about preparing against them and more pr preparing yourself for anything that could, they, they could throw at you, any sort of pick. Uh, I knew that Gangplank was a high priority. We thought they were going to pick it a lot and try to first pick it, but instead they actually banned it and they expected us to play it, which was a... Uh, kind of a weird difference in uh, strategy that we thought they were going to do. But um, basically, you just have to prepare yourself uh, less than trying to prepare against them because you, you have no idea what they're going to pick, uh, especially in this next split. Everyone's going to be playing different champions and stuff like that. So it's really just preparing yourself. Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned next split and all the changes that are going to come through. You know, presumably by the time we get to the next split, in the end, this is a team that has been on that cusp of relegation, playoffs, you know, sitting in the seventh, eighth place slot. What is going to change between now and the spring that's going to catapult you guys up into that upper echelon of teams? What do you need to work on specifically in this off time to make sure that you guys get there? <clears throat> I think a lot of our problems stem from, like, I played really poorly at this split because I didn't really, I lacked a lot of confidence in myself from just reasons. And so in the off, off season, I'm just going to work really hard to try to improve as much as I possibly can, not only as an image, Jesus, as an individual, but also as a shot caller. Uh, I've been planning to go to China for a boot camp to try to just train against the Chinese 80 carries and just try to become as good as I possibly can. Because they're, so they're insanely good, best 80 carries by far. Yep. So just being able to train against them would be really good for me. All right. Well, that's a really cool opportunity. Porpoise, uh, what about for you individually? What are you looking to, to work on in this offseason? 
Uh, well, we're going to pick up a new top laner, so it's going to be hard transitioning how I play. Me and Callie have grown kind of uh, the way we play together, and you saw like we did a lot of dives and things. They didn't work out in the last game, but uh, we do that a lot. We, we're really aggressive, so finding a top laner who can kind of set those things up like Callie did. He, he, Callie played really well, traded really well, so he could set up a lot of plays. If we can find a top laner who's like half as good as Callie, we should be okay for next split. Has the search searching process for a new top laner begun yet for the team, or is that still a ways away? <laughs> not, not quite. We have some options on the table, but we're taking a good look at, you know, everywhere we can. All right, now finally, I want to I want to come back to you, Nian, and give you the opportunity you know, to speak on behalf of the team to Cali about what he's done, having been a person who has been a leader for the team, one of the you know one of the founding members of the team, and now that he's going to be parting ways with you guys, leaving you in the LCS. Is there anything you'd like to say on behalf of the team? I'd just like to say thank you for playing. It was fun playing with you guys, especially like everyone on the team. I just had a fun playing with you guys, and like you're super good, and appreciate you helping us get back in. You did really really well today. And I think everyone on the team would agree with me. So thank you. Definitely. And Callie, to you one last time, anything you'd like to say either to your team or the fans at large who have supported you throughout your journey in the LCS? Um, my team and the whole community uh, has been really helpful for me. From the beginning, I got a lot of support that I didn't really expect or I, I think I didn't really deserve. And I got it to this spot, and it's been really an honor for me to have these kind of, like, few uh, fans that's really devoted to us and who's kept supporting us despite our downs in the both splits, I guess. It wasn't really fantastic splits. So thank you so much for the whole, whole support. I'll definitely be keeping in touch with the esports, not as a player, but rather as an RM fan. And probably come here one, once a day or so. Please like, do. Like, I live like 30 minutes from here. So well, we'll gladly have you. Again, gentlemen, all three of you, congratulations on the victory today and requalifying for the LCS. Now for some final Thank thoughts, you. let's throw it out to Riv and Zyrene. Thank you very much, Dash. An awesome bit of history there for You'll the be LCS. Here once a day. Once a day. Once a day. More than me. I know. <laughs> that's that's a tall <laughs> order. That's a tall order. I don't live thirty minutes away and I don't even come here once a day. But still, Cali Trolls. You know, like Dash said, love to have him. Yeah. Honestly. Awesome guy. Honestly. Welcome he anytime. Put out everything for his team. Not really something you, you kind of like. I know uh, Mega Zero kind of went off to school and whatnot, but they kind of did their own thing as things fizzled out. For somebody to stay and give themselves one last time to the team, then go on and finish the, your goal in life. For pharmacy school, yeah, you it's not an easy task. No school is an easy task, but definitely goals are set, and Kelly Trolls got it to go the way he wanted. Yeah, he didn't even know if he was going to be able to play. That's true. So that's very I true. Hear from him. He wouldn't. Have, he wouldn't have traded this experience for anything yep. else. And there's a reason he took it. And he definitely feels like it's a positive experience for him. But you know, there's a lot of people who would have been just been like, you know what, you guys are in relegations. Yeah. Good luck. Find a substitute. Right. But no, he stuck with it. I know the school has pretty much started up for him already. So he's putting in the time in yeah. both having also having to take a year off for pharmacy school and then get right back into it. Right. You've not been studying the same that you were before. And I, so. Big shout-outs to him to come back here and get Absolutely. teammate in and end his career on a win. And I definitely want to point out, I like the fact that Porpoise talked about there are really big things that we noticed that we were getting much better at at the end of the season, and I feel like that's actually something true. One of those is my favorite for any team, and it's closing out a game. It's actually something that a lot of teams hesitate on or feel that they can do it, but their feel that they can do it is, oh, we'll get to 50 minutes and close it out. That's not closing it out. That's just waiting until somebody makes a mistake. There's not many teams that will for sure do that, and we saw a teammate do that in the end there. They put their foot down, and I hope they can carry that into the next split of the LC. Yes, because a lot of teams can learn from that. A lot of teams do it, just few and far between. Yeah, there's actually a, uh, trying to remember who it was. If you want to go see a great example of how to close out a game, it's the EDG game one of the, the playoffs. I believe it was, it wasn't against IG. It was against, uh, I think it might have been QG. All right, Chao Gu, yeah, maybe. I think so. Somebody will go on the hurt, hunt. The hunt. Mm -hmm. They'll tweet you about it. Yeah. <laughs> well, you think about I, it. I watched Maybe it we'll and I was back. like, "Wow, this is this is how you close a game out once you get a lead." But anyway, it's the EDG game, yeah. game one of their. Uh, Those are always great games to go back to. It's like going back to watching Gambit run Jan in the jungle with Siobhan. This kind of stuff. Like, yeah. This stuff was so cool. And now to wrap up the spring promotion tournament, let's head over to the analyst desk. 
Thank you, gentlemen. And again, 3-1 victory there for Team 8, requalifying for the LCS. Gentlemen, I just want to get your final thoughts on the series as a whole. First, let's start with Imagine, mm -hmm. you know, our challenger, our challenger team here that I do believe showed a lot of uh, upside, a lot of potential. They had some very solid play, just some minor errors that, uh, you know, seemed to kind of hand the game away at times. Yeah, they, they played really well, I mean, for the most part. You know, we thought that, I think... Most people thought they would go slightly more favor towards teammate, like they would kind of crush them almost. But they showed after the game two that they, you know they're still in this game, or they're still in this series. And even game three was well, or did they did well? So I think just teammate just played like slightly better than them, and then just got the series off that. Especially for a team that's gone through so much changes during the Challenger series, you know mm -hmm. the players they brought in, all the swaps that they had to make. Uh, yeah, good showing there for them and mm -hmm. uh, for teammate. Uh, they are going to go through a lot more changes. Yeah, yeah, they've got a lot of changes ahead of them. And that's what's kind of crazy when we think about the fact that they're losing Cali Trolls, their top laner, and who was their primary shot caller at one point. I know that those duties are you know, being transitioned as much as possible over yeah. to Nien. Porpoise probably taking a little bit of that you know, workload as well. But you know, when, we look about, when we look at how are they going to perform in the spring split, you know, this is a lot for, for the team to go through. Apollo... Uh, can you speak to what specifically yeah. you know they might need to work on when they are going through these this restructuring? Yeah, it's always difficult like bringing in a new player. Like obviously we had to do that too. It's it's just a matter of right, finding the right player and also kind of the right personality that fits with the team too. Some players just don't get along well, right? And that just happens. Uh, so just making sure that not only do they have the right mentality and their play style is, just, or yeah, not only the play style but their mentality as well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I thought it was an interesting little tidbit. Nien was talking about taking a trip to China to yeah. train over there, and that would be pretty... I'd, I'd be very interested to see, you know, how in-depth they go. Do does he have translators to work with people? Is he just going to solo right. Is queue? it just going to be solo queue? Is he going to go yeah. live yeah. and work with a team, maybe? Are, is the rest of the team going to go over there? Uh, it was a <laughs> little interesting teaser. Yeah, <laughs> I, I we'll yeah. have to explore that a little bit more. Now, for this series, it was Golden Glue who came up huge and grabbed our player of the series honor. Of course, we have to hand that out at the end of the day. He was everywhere for his team with a 77% kill participation and had a big hand in re-securing teammates' place in the LCS. He played, of course, two, three different champions, Azir, Victor, Oriana, twice. You know, in those, in those chaotic games, it was finding those Ori ultimates that could turn fights that I feel really contributed to their victories. Also, the, I mean, he started off the series with the really big win with his Azir, which made it, you know, it changes the entire series almost, right? That means they have to either take away the Azir or ban it, and so I think it helped that he started off the series so strong. Plus, people need to remember, this is a guy that he came in as a substitute. He had to replace yeah. Slushy. You know, he was a new person coming into a team, and he had to work with a bunch of new guys, and Mel did pretty well. Yeah. Coming into his own as a player here in the LCS. Well, let's take a look at the 10 teams that will be competing in the upcoming 2016 North American Spring Split. Challenger Series winners Renegades auto-qualified. They'll join Team Coast, who successfully knocked out enemy esports in their 3-0 sweep. Then Team 8 were able to fend off Team Imagine to keep hold of their place in the big leagues. That's going to do it for us today, but make sure you set a reminder to tune in Saturday, September 12th for the World's Group Draw Show. We'll be breaking down the teams that have qualified and then randomly drawing uh, the teams into the groups they'll compete in. That will take place at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Central uh, European Time for our friends over there. Once again, we'd like to congratulate Team Coast and Team 8 on their victories, and we look forward to seeing them compete in the upcoming split. Of course, a special thanks goes to, out to Apollo and Kiwi Kid for sharing their insights with us on the desk today. Now, for myself and the entire live broadcast crew, thank you for watching, and good night.